The Jack Benny Program. Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now we take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. It's early morning. Jack is still asleep, and Rochester's in the kitchen preparing breakfast. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. <laughs> Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, and radio. So whether you go out or stay home, he's got you trapped. <laughs> who? Oh, hello, Sam. I'm glad you called. Hurry right over and return that suit I rented you. The boss is back. I know your week ain't up yet, but I'll give you your money pronto, pro rato, and providing I'm alive when you get here. <laughs> That's right. And Sam, you, uh, I wish you'd pass the word along to the rest of my clientele. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I uh, guess I'm safe now. Uh-oh. I'll have to dig up some excuse about Mr. Benny's tuxedo. Doggone when I ran it out for Jerome, how did I know they was going to cremate him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'd better prepare breakfast before the boss gets up. <laughs> Coming! Oh, it's you, Mr. Milkman. Good morning, Rochester. I see by this note you left, you want me to start delivering milk again and stop leaving cream. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Benny's back. Oh, say, Rochester, is it true that Mr. Benny is going on the air for a new sponsor? Yes, sir. Well, look, you tell Mr. Benny I'll be listening to him. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, there's a little matter of last month's bill. Here it is. Mmm, $28 for cream. Okay, I'll write you out a check for it. Uh, wait a minute. Is that a pair of dice you're taking out of your pocket? Mr. Milkman, lay that bill down on the ground. Oh, but Rochester, now look, I don't want... It's too late now, I'm wound up. <laughs> oh, all right. Here it goes. There it is in black and white. <laughs> Doggone, I've been homogenized again. <laughs> well, goodbye and bell up next month. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, good morning, boss. Sit right down and have your breakfast. Thanks. Gee, it's good to be home. Good to have you home, boss. You'll never know how much I miss you. Did you, Rochester? Yeah. The three months you were away, this old house was so lonesome. I'd go into the living room and see your big easy chair with no one in it, and I'd feel like crying. Gee. The trees outside were in bloom, but they looked barren to me. Oh, Rochester. The birds were singing, but I never could seem to hear them. The sun was shining, but I never saw it. Really, Rochester? Yeah. I never got up till 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> now, cut out this nonsense and get me something to eat. What are we having for breakfast? Huh? I said, what are we having for breakfast? If this was last season, I could mention it. <laughs> if this was last season, you'd have to mention it. <laughs> now, get me my breakfast. Okay. Okay, I'll get you coffee. You won't sleep till 8 o'clock at night anymore. <coughs> Rochester, shut off the egg timer. But I'm getting your coffee. Shut off the egg timer. Okay. Rochester, answer the door. You told me to shut off the egg timer. Answer the door. Okay. Rochester, answer the phone. You told me to answer the door. Answer the phone. Boss, I can't be in all those places at once. I ain't General Patton. <laughs> We'll talk about your rank later. <laughs> you stop the egg timer and answer the door. I'll answer the phone. Or the door, rather. Da-da-dee-da-dum, da-dee-da-dum. Oh, boy, it's good to be home. 
Da 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 da. Hello, Jack. Mary. Good to see you. Gosh, Jack, you look wonderful. I gotta give you a great big kiss. Oh, Mary, not, not out here on the front porch. <laughs> Another one. Mary, Mary, please, you're embarrassing me. One more, Jack. Mary, for heaven's sake, put me down. <laughs> Oh, Jack, what are you ashamed of? I haven't seen you in three months, and that's a long time to go without a kiss. Gee, Mary, you mean you haven't kissed anybody for three months? Leave me out of it. I'm thinking about you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Gosh, Jack, it's good to see you. How was your trip? Come on in. I'll tell you all about it. Ah, Mary, believe me, it was wonderful doing shows for the boys overseas. What a great job those kids are doing. And you know what? If I were 20 years younger, I'd be right out there with him. You said that during the last war. <laughs> well, I meant it then, too. I mean, Mary, stop mixing me up. I was in the last war. Remember, I was in the Navy. Oh, Miss Livingston, hello. How hello, are you? Hello, Rochester. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny, that telephone call was from your sponsor. My sponsor? You act like you're surprised you got one. <laughs> well, I'm surprised he called. I wonder what it's about. Maybe he wants to... No, he wouldn't be giving me a bonus so soon. <laughs> uh, I, I wonder what it can be. Well, maybe he wants to know who you're going to have for a singer. You still haven't got anyone to replace Dennis Day. That's right, Mary. You know, confidentially, I've been considering Bing Crosby for my singer. You know, he's starting to get popular now. <laughs> Well, Jack, I don't want to disillusion you, but you're not going to get Crosby for $35 a week. I wasn't thinking of $35. You ain't going to get him for what you're thinking either. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Jack, what are you talking about? You can't hire Crosby. He makes thousands of dollars a week. Well, hey, maybe I could get his little son, Larry. He sings, too. <laughs> Or for five dollars more, maybe I could get the twins. Why don't you wait another year? You might have more to choose from. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going to worry about it now. I'll find a singer. Come in! Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Jack. Filthy! Oh, Jack, that trip did you a lot of good. You look wonderful. I feel good, Don. I really do. Although I lost about 10 pounds. Well, I lost some weight, too, but on me, it isn't noticeable. <laughs> really, Don? How much did you lose? 84 pounds. <laughs> Don, you didn't lose it. You just misplaced it. <laughs> you know, Jackson, it's like old times having you back. I thought about you every day. Oh, sure, sure, Phil. I bet you didn't even know I was gone. I did, too. You left on the day of Flat Top's funeral. You were gone all through Gravel Gertie, and you got back the day after the brow paid his debt to society. <laughs> the brow? Gravel Gertie? What are you talking about? I bet you don't even know about the Summer Sisters being in that iron clamp. <laughs> The Summer Sister. How do you like that? The newspapers spend millions of dollars trying to educate people, and he don't even take advantage of it. <laughs> Phil, I've been away. I don't know what's going on around here. Say, Phil... Why, Jack, Phil was on the Kay Kaiser program. Well, that must have been nice. For 13 weeks. 13 weeks? Now I know you're a jerk. What do you mean? If you couldn't answer the questions the first week, why did you keep going back? <laughs> That I can't understand. Look, Jackson, you got it all wrong. They hired me to ask the questions. I was the professor. Professor? Yes, professor. P-U-R-F-E-Z. I know how to spell it. <laughs> O-R. <laughs> Remind me. Remind me to listen in Wednesday night. I want to hear Phil ask those questions. Jack, starting Wednesday night, Kate Kaiser will be back on the show. Oh, then I'll surely listen. 
Well, fellas, I hate to break this up, but I got a call from my sponsor, and I have to go over and see him. Oh, say, kids, before I go, I want to give you the souvenirs I brought you from the South Pacific. Boss, you want a hammer to open that big crate? No, no, not the crate. The souvenirs are in the valises. Well, what's in the crate? Never mind. You're acting kind of funny about that crate, Jack. Why don't you open it? I don't have to. The souvenirs are in the valises. Then what have you got in that crate? It's something I brought home for myself. I got it on one of the islands in the South Seas. Well, open it up, Jack. Let's see what it is. Don, it's nothing. You wouldn't be interested. Rochester, give me that hammer. I'm going to open it up. Here you are, Mr. Harris. Phil, please. <laughs> Phil, it's just a little thing I picked up on one of the islands. It's for me. <laughs> Phil. Well, it's open. Phil, you have no right to pick up... Hey, a... Jackson, what are you so excited about? There's nothing in this crate but a grass skirt. Nothing but a grass skirt. Let me... Oh, darn it, she got away. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Why, Jack Benny, do you mean you actually try to bring back a... Mary, help as hard to get and stop leering at me. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, we're going down to see my sponsor. See you later, fellas. I'll see you after. <laughs> Wherever you are I know I know you're not very far How I wish you'd hurry Cause I'm inclined to worry These arms of mine are open Open, you'll appear Where are you, dear? Come out, come out Come out wherever you are Come out Come out from under that star Yes, and incidentally, mentally I'm not up to par So come out, come out, come out Wherever you are Yes, and incidentally, mentally I'm not up to par, so come out, come out, come out, wherever you are. Here it is, Mary. Here's my sponsor's office, George W. Hill. Let's go in. Okay. And Mary, please try and act nice, will you? Oh, Jack, stop worrying. Even though he is your sponsor, you don't have to fall all over him. Don't be silly, Mary. I'm going to treat him just like any other person. But, Jack, you never brought a girl in Orchid. Why bring him one? <laughs> well, you know, Mary, a man in his position has got almost everything else. Come on, let's go in. <laughs> Miss, will you please stop into Mr. Hill's office, uh, uh, step in and tell him I'm here? Yes, sir. Well, I haven't heard that side of it before, but uh, continue. Your opinions interest Pardon me. Pardon me, Mr. Hill. Uh, yes, Miss Bates? Jack Benny is waiting in the outer office. Oh, good, good. Tell him I'll see him in a few minutes. I'm in conference right now. Yes, sir. Now, as I was saying, your opinions interest me. I'd like to hear more of them. Well, first of all, Mr. Hill, <laughs> I... I don't want you to think that I have anything against Benny personally. Oh, of course not, Mr. Allen. You see, Mr. Hill, with uh, Allen, it's two receptions to one instead of... <laughs> I'd, uh... I'd be the last one to try and get his job. I've always semi-admired Mr. Benny. <laughs> 
Well, after all, Fred, how could anyone dislike a man like Jack? A man who, who last year was affectionately nicknamed after General Patton. Old Blood and Guts Benny. Oh. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> Old oh, um... <laughs> Old Blood and Guts Benny. You mean Old Toupee and Wrinkle. <laughs> old Blood and... Why, you know, Mr. Hill, last week his doctor took a sample of Benny's blood and sent it to the laboratory to be analyzed... It came back with a note saying, Congratulations. Put an olive in this and you've got a martini. <laughs> Blood, why, Benny wasn't delivered by the stork. He was brought by a leech. <laughs> Mr. Allen, hearing you talk, I get the impression that you don't like Mr. Benny. Oh, I'm sorry I gave you that impression, Mr. Hill. <laughs> I'm really very fond of Jack. He's one of my best friends. It's just that I, well, I hate to see him go back on the air and be a flop. But uh, what makes you think Benny will be a flop? He always gets laughs. Mr. Hill. <laughs> Anyone can get laughs who tells a joke, wiggles his ears, drops his pants, and then shows a Bob Hope movie on the seat of his underwear. <laughs> And with Benny's red flannels, it looks like it's in Technicolor yet. <laughs> how could he miss? But, Mr. Allen, I am a businessman. I don't care how a comedian gets his laughs as long as he sells the product. And I think lots of people will sit by the radio, smoke a cigarette, and listen to Jack Benny. Mr. Hill, that is an impossibility if I have ever heard one. Smoke a cigarette and listen to Benny. How in the world can anyone smoke and hold his nose at the same time? <laughs> Done. You know, Fred, I'm a little surprised hearing all this. You see, when I hired Jack, I thought he had a large following. No, he just looks that way when he's not wearing his girdle. <laughs> that uh, large following is all Benny. Well, uh, look, Fred, uh, perhaps it isn't too late. Do you think I could help the program if I got rid of Benny? No, by all means keep Jack on the program, Mr. Hill. Just cut his part down a little. Oh, cut his part down a little, eh? Well, look, Mr. Hill, I know you're a busy man, and I want to run down the hall and see your assistant for a few seconds. I may drop back a little later. Okay, Fred, you'll find Mr. Stauffer's office quicker if you go through that rear door. I knew he'd be in the rear. Thank you so long. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Hill. You may send Mr. Benny in now. Well, hello, Mr. Hill. Sure glad to see you. Here, have a cigarette. I am already smoking one. Oh, well, I'll have another. <laughs> Mr. Hill, you know Mary. Mary, you know Mr. Hill. Now, I don't mind telling you, Mr. Hill. Hello, Mr. You're Hill. one of a swell... Uh, now, I don't mind telling you, Mr. Hill. Hello, one... Mary. Now, I don't mind telling you, Mr. Hill, <laughs> that you're one of the swellest guys I've ever met. Not because you're my new sponsor, but because you're one of the finest fellas in the world. One of the squarest, grandest guys. Oh, Jack, stop pinching his cheek. <laughs> Oh, oh well, Mr. Hill, uh, here we are. Yes, sir, ready to get off to a great start on our new radio series. Well, Jack, uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yes, sir. Talk? <laughs> to me? Is there wrong anything? I mean, anything wrong? Is there? Is there? Is there? Uh huh? No, no, Jack. Nothing wrong. Just a routine talk. Uh, sit down. Yes, sir. That's my chair. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it was your chair. Well, you should know. You're sitting on him. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Silly me not to notice you, Mr. Hill. I'll sit here. Now you're sitting on me. <laughs> because I am a little excited, Mary. I, I'll, I'll sit here. All right, if you think you'll be comfortable on that ashtray. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Trey. I mean, I'll just get up. <laughs> Is this your lighted cigarette, Mr. Hill? Sorry, I didn't see it, Mr. Lighted. I mean, Mr. Hill. Now, Jack, I wanted to talk to you about some things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, uh, sir. by the way, guess who was sitting in this office just a few minutes ago? Well, I haven't the slightest idea, Mr. Hill. Who was it? Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What was he doing here? 
What did he want? What did he say? Well, Jack, for one thing, he said... That's a lie! <laughs> and when I see him, I'm going to get... Now, Jack, that's no attitude to take. Fred doesn't dislike you. Why don't you try to like him? How can anyone like a guy who looks like he does? Oh, Jack, Alan isn't so ugly. How would you know? You can't see his face until you lift the bags under his eyes. <laughs> and with that pained expression, he looks like a hen trying to lay a square egg. <laughs> well, don't tell me about Alan. Now, now, Jack, don't get excited. And please stop biting my nails. <laughs> if I ever meet that sneak face to face... I'll tell him a Well, thing. Mr. Hill, I just dropped back to say goodbye, and, uh, why, Jack. Jackie Benny. Fred. Freddy, old boy. Jack, old pal, it's certainly good to see what's left of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Freddy. I, I was just telling Mary and Mr. Hill how much I've missed you. Yes, sir, Jack. It's great being together again. I'll say it is. Well, tell me, Freddy boy, what are you doing out here in Hollywood? Oh, making a picture. I'm over at United Artists. Oh, yes, yes. I heard that Boris Karloff isn't there anymore. <laughs> I know, and I heard that since you've been with Warners, the studio isn't there anymore. <laughs> now, listen here, Alan. Now, Jack, it's your own fault. You always have a chip on your shoulder. I haven't got a chip on my shoulder. No, he's right, Mary. That's his head. <laughs> his head looks like a knot hole with skin on it. But, Alan, I've tried to be friends with you, but you won't have it that way. I'd punch you right in the nose if there wasn't a lady present. I'll leave, Jack. You sit down. <laughs> now, you listen to me, Alan. And you listen to me, Benny. You'd punch who in the nose? I'd punch you in the nose if it weren't for your wife and children. I haven't got any children. Then why aren't you in the army? <laughs> Answer that, civilian. Oh, Jack! You Thanks. keep out of this. Now, listen, Alan. For the last time, I want you to mind your own business. Jack, why don't you and Fred shake hands and... You shut to... up. Now, listen. I want to tell... Oh. Oh, my goodness. I said that to my sponsor. Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill, I didn't mean to say shut up to you. I meant just to say be quiet. I mean, please be quiet. I mean, I didn't mean it at all. I never think to say like that to you. Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill, don't stand there with your back to me. Fred. Freddy boy, please tell Mr. Hill I didn't mean it. Suffer, it was an accident. Benny. It was all a big mistake. <laughs> Fred, don't stand there with your back to me. Mary, Mary, tell Mr. Hill it was all a mistake. Tell him I'm sorry. Tell him anything. Just say something. I jive, man alive. It starts with the bugler blowing reveille over your bed when you arrive. Jack, that's the G.I. jive. Rootly toot, jump in your suit, make a salute. Mm, boo! Then you wash and dress, more or less. You go get your breakfast in a beautiful little cafe they call the mess. Jack, when you convalesce, out of your seat, into the street, make with a feet. Reet. Now, if you're a PFC, your duty is to salute a L I E U T. But if you brush the L-I-E-U-T, the M-P makes you K-P on the Q-T. This is the G-I jive, man alive. They give you a private tank that features a little device called fluid drive. Jack, if you still survive, chunk all your junk back in your trunk. Fall on your bunk. Clunk. G.I. 
jive, jive, man alive. They give you a private tank, but features a little device called fluid drive. Jack, after you revive, chunk all your junk back in your trunk, fall on your bunk, clunk. Soon you're counting jeeps, but before you count to five, you'll be right back digging that G.I. Do you think Mr. Hill was really angry at me because of what I said? Oh, no, Jack. He knew you were excited and nervous. Gee, I, I hope so. Say, Jack, what are you going to do about a new singer for our show? We have to get somebody since Dennis is in the Navy. Well, I don't know, Mary. I thought maybe next Sunday I would talk to Frank Sinatra and see if I can make a deal with him. Frank Sinatra? Yeah. But, Jack, he's got two programs already. Well... Then maybe he'll hire me. <laughs> we'll get together some way. I'll ask him to drop over next Sunday. Good night, folks. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.